I'm Alex Berman, and you're watching Selling Breakdowns. Steven Soderbergh has been in the movie industry for about a quarter of a century, renowned for using the Hollywood establishment to showcase his creative genius right up till the point he felt the need to walk away. I love Soderbergh because he can go out and make the most corporate movie. So Ocean's Eleven, Aaron Brockovich, stuff that makes hundreds of millions of dollars, super successful franchises, and at the same time, he'll create art films. Side Effects was amazing. Behind the Candelabra. These movies that have smaller budgets and are made for the art. He's right there in the middle of art and mass market. So let's start at the beginning because Soderbergh's one of the few people where you can just follow his career in order and it tells an amazing story. For those who don't know, Soderbergh started his career as the second youngest Palme d'Or winner at the Cannes Film Festival for Sex, Lies, and Videotape. The Palme d'Or is one of the most prestigious awards in independent film, or actually film in general, given only to some of the greatest films of our time, like Pulp Fiction. In 1997, he made another couple movies. He made Out of Sight and then The Limey in 1999, which got him back into the Hollywood system a little bit. In 2001, he was nominated twice for the Oscar for Best Director for his movies Aaron Brockovich and Traffic, which he won for Traffic, and his next movie was a sensational hit. Who hasn't seen Ocean's Eleven? That final scene where they're outside the Bellagio fountains? It's glorious. In the last 10 years, he's made a two-part life story about Che Guevara. He also helped Channing Tatum establish himself as a recognized movie star with Magic Mike. Soderbergh believes that the more movies you produce, the better you are as a movie producer. In 2013, he began working on The Nick for Cinemax, which lasted two seasons. After that, he didn't release any movie until Logan Lucky in 2017. By this time, Soderbergh was used to working on high-budget movies and studio productions, but at the same time, he's been very vocal about the dangers involved in producing movies with marketing budgets that exceeded the cost of production. That movie wasn't a huge success commercially, and it might have prompted him to rethink and change direction for his next movie, Unsane, which featured Claire Foy and Juno Temple. In an interview prior to the production of Unsane, Soderbergh admitted that he was going to adopt an entirely different approach to expenses from what was executed for Logan Lucky. Also, he needed to take into account that Unsane and Logan Lucky were two entirely different movies with different target audiences. But that's not the most interesting thing about this movie Unseen. The most interesting thing is the entire movie was shot on an iPhone. And his theory was that audiences without prior knowledge about production would have no idea that the movie was shot using a phone. And as a result, he's pledged to continue using the phone to shoot movies in the future. Soderbergh remains one of the few people in Hollywood that is able to completely dominate the Hollywood system while also staying removed from it. And that's worth looking up to. I want to thank anyone who spends part of their day creating. Anybody who spends part of their day sharing their experience with us. I think this world would be unlivable without art. And I thank you. That includes the Academy. That includes my fellow nominees here tonight. Thank you for inspiring me. Thank you for this. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, I would love if you could think of a friend who might also like it and share it with them. Also, if you want more videos like this, please feel free to subscribe. I'm Alex Berman. Thanks.